Ice Crappers, Tom from the Ice Crap app. Today is Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018. We hope that everyone is doing well, scrapping often. I know that many of you on the East Coast have had a lot of rainstorms the last week and a half. It's been more like April showers instead of you know those May flowers we're supposed to be having. But hopefully a lot of you have been going out there and, and scrapping regardless. We've seen lots of pictures coming through our new Facebook group with uh, people sharing different photos of things that they're scrapping, how they're scrapping, answering really great questions on what's worth scrapping, how people scrap things, and it's really taken off way better than we ever could have hoped for. You know, we have almost a thousand members in the first month talking about scrap, talking to each other about things that they do, and as the moderators, we're making sure that there aren't ads getting pushed in there, that there aren't people trying to sell their services. We just want to be scrappers talking to scrappers about scrap to learn about scrappy things. So, you know, we're just trying to make it so you can learn more and more about scrap and believe it or not, we are learning more about scrap because you know sometimes you get too much of a tunnel vision when you're doing the same thing over and over again. Bill from Albany says hi. Albany, what's up, Mr. Bill from Albany? You get too much tunnel vision when you're talking about the same thing and doing the same thing every day. Sometimes getting out of a comfort zone and reading about new things will only help you learn and continue to grow in whatever it is that you're doing. And that's what we've been doing, watching many of you talk in the you know the, the scrap metal group that we have online. So anyway, uh, in the last week we've seen a, a lot of things. Uh, you know, things is tends to be a, a term that we're using more and more lately because we don't have any rhyme or reason for a lot of stuff happening. We've seen a lot of political events that have really impacted the scrap market. We've talked about that for six months. That will continue to be something that we talk about for the next six months, if not the next six years. Um, a lot of the information that's going on is really changing how the scrap markets and the pricing uh, has been getting dictated. So we've been watching these things and trying to kind of learn with them, but it certainly has not been the easiest thing in the world. But we're watching it and we're learning um, just as much as hopefully you're learning at the same time. So you know, in the last week we've seen copper have a little bit of a, another roller coaster. We saw those markets jump about 2% going up about six or seven cents, and then they stabilized for a couple of days. Thursday, Friday, Monday, we saw a bit of a stabilization. We started to see some of the reported prices that people were putting online pop up. We saw Bear Bright listed as high as 277 per pound. So we we're really optimistic that the copper market was going well. We saw the stock market on Monday jump up almost 300 points. After we heard that the US and China were kind of stalling some of the tariffs and the potential setbacks that were going to go in because they're going to talk for the next two weeks and figure out how they can work together in a more efficient and, and closer way. We have a question? Come on, bring it on. A couple comments. Sure. Jonathan in Alabama says hello. Jonathan, what's up? And then David also said, big thumbs up for the group. I've learned a lot and I've tried to share tips and tricks that I've learned. Don't give up. These live videos are another thing I look forward to weekly. Really appreciate the comments. Thank you very much. Uh, that's why we do this, and, and I'll digress slightly. You know, when we started iScrap seven years ago, we wanted to create a company that was going to be connecting scrap yards with scrappers. And what we've learned is it's been a hell of a lot easier to work with scrappers than it has to work with scrap yards. You know, scrap yards have so many things going on, but scrappers are constantly asking questions, looking to learn, looking to grow, looking to figure out how to make more money, and that's been one of the more interesting and exciting things that we've been doing. So we've really enjoyed doing it. So thank you everyone for watching and for your comments. So while the U.S. and China continue to have their talks about settling these these trade back and forth and these tariffs and these restrictions and these guidelines, you know we've seen the market. We just saw it take a, a jump on Monday, on Tuesday, and then again today we've seen the market pull back about 400 points altogether, and we saw the copper prices drop about seven cents a pound. Why these things are happening are no longer real clear-cut black and white reasons. It hasn't even been gray. It's been more like blotchy all over the place. Like, you know, news is happening, but there's no rhyme or reason every day for some of the market prices to be doing what they're doing. We continue to see oil prices climb, and historically oil, uh, oil prices have paired with commodity metals. So, you know, oil goes up, metal goes up, maybe not exactly at the same time, but one will follow the other. You have to figure oil, when it's expensive, it's more expensive to move material, to process material, to have furnaces burning you know, the metals and melting them down into raw product again, to have a lot of the 
uh, scrapyard, the scrappers moving their cars, trucks, rails, all these things become more expensive. And even though you know you have so many contributing factors, right now is one of those weird times that we're trying to figure out. Now, if you ask me, seeing those copper prices jump about 30% in 2017, you know, while we haven't seen that much of a climb in 2018, we also haven't seen that much of a decline. Sometimes you have to take the optimistic point of view and seeing things not go down sometimes is much more important than seeing things go up. So we've continued to monitor the market. Yes, things have become more aggressive. Yes, steel prices have risen. And we've been very happy to see some of these prices go up over the last few months. We saw light iron prices go up about $5 a ton. We started to see some reported prices in the last two or three days, May 21st, 22nd, 23rd, with some of the light iron prices jumping up there. The heavier melt items, the unprepared steels, the PNSs, those markets have remained relatively stable over the last month, which is a good thing. But we've talked about light iron over the last few weeks. Light iron is an item that you'll generally take, you'll sort, you'll ship, you'll try to get a lot of the copper, aluminum, brass out of it when it goes to shredder yards. And a lot of those materials were going overseas with the overseas market kind of tightening up right now. We saw those prices take a big decrease, about $20 a ton two weeks ago. And hopefully we'll start to see that rebound a little bit. Virginia, we had a question. Um, Jack from Kentucky um, asked, what is the future of copper and white shred looking like in the next few months? Great, thanks for the question, Jack. I appreciate it. I think that copper is where it's gonna be for the rest of 2018 think that the level that we see is going to go up or down 20 cents a pound. That's not a bad thing. Having a level off year with very minor market changes, today copper is down 2%, tomorrow could be up 1%, but that's a very steady thing. That allows scrap yards to lock in prices, that allows them to know what they're going to be selling things at, and allows them to stabilize the markets, and allows you, the scrapper, to have a much better idea on how things are going to work. One of the new things that we have coming out on our homepage next month will be a lot of average prices across the U.S. and Canada, giving you a much better idea on where the markets are and how you'll be able to take that market information and pull a couple of pieces out of it to see where the market was, is, and could possibly be going based off of some prior trends. So white goods, white goods, you know, the light iron market, like I just said a couple of minutes ago, uh, it's recovered slightly this week. We've seen some prices jump, but until we see a lot of the dust settling, primarily on the China America TIF right now with them figuring out how these tariffs are gonna be put into place, to figure out how some of the technology is gonna be shared, to figure out how some of the technology that's been stolen is gonna be able to be recouped. You know, I'm not gonna get into it, but there's a, a big company in China called ZTE who has been um, accused of stealing a lot of U.S. technology. And with that, the U.S. has said no, the U.S. government has said that no U.S. companies are allowed to do business with this company, ZTE, which has put a large damper on a lot of the, the metals that were going over and a lot of the trading, a lot of the question marks between the Chinese and the U.S. economies right now. We have a lot of things going on, and I'm not going to get into a super amount of details, but I promise you we're continue to watch it. But a lot of these things that are going on are affecting the electric motors, the insulated copper wires, and even the raw metals like bare bright number one and number two tubing. We've seen brass take about a 12 cent hit over the last month with no real reason other than the export market has weakened. You know, we saw the brass prices drop 12 cents a pound on average from the prices that we saw reported online. And that's a really big drop, uh, drop about four to five percent where the overall market has been even. So these little things have been happening. We've been watching and monitoring and we'll continue to throw them into the pot as we get them and try to make this picture you know, become more and more clear. This is like a, an ever expanding puzzle. We get a couple of puzzle pieces locked together and those puzzle pieces just kind of grow arms. And then we have to figure out a couple more pieces and we have to lock them into place. And we look at it, it's starting to become a little more clear, but then you know, four more pieces go to the left and it just makes it a little more complicated. These are all the things that we're figuring out right now and it is not the easiest thing in the world. B? Um, Jonathan just asked, do you expect, expect a spike in scrap copper prices a few days before the new year like it did in 2017? Ask me in December, Jonathan. 
Listen, brother, if I had that crystal ball, I promise you, instead of my office being my backdrop, I'd be on an island right now having a Mai Tai giving you my advice on where the markets are going to be because I could predict the future. Virginia? Just had another question pop up from Jack. What would you say would be the big money maker this coming summer? Whatever you can get your hands on. Maybe, so what are some common items so, people so, find so let's, so let's go with this. Um, the most common money maker is whatever you can find. You know, what, what you're going to see most often during the summer, and we'll post a couple of links for blogs that we've written in the past, cast aluminum grills. This is the grilling season. You're going to see cast aluminum, those old ones. You're going to see stainless steel grills getting thrown out, especially, don't forget, this weekend the Memorial Day weekend. This is a big season for grill owners to, to take that grill out from the cover, to scrub that thing clean, and fire that bitch up. And that's going to be an item that you're going to see. You're going to see a hell of a lot of air conditioners. A couple of pieces of advice on air conditioners. Do not just cut air conditioners and let the Freon pop into the air. Do not let the oil from the compressors and the sealed units go into the ground. Those are unhealthy things for the environment and those are stupid things to do. Even if you want to say forget the environment for a second, why the hell do you want to cut a Freon line and have that gas blow into your face? That is foolish and not a good idea in any way, shape, or form. Air conditioners, a big one. We recommend that you look at um, the scrap law section that we have on our website to see how you can go and sell things correctly inside of each of your states. Certain states do not let non-HVAC contractors sell HVAC units. So we know that once in particular, Georgia, if you don't have a license to be a heating, venting, and air conditioning contractor, you can't go to scrapyard and sell these units, which makes it a heck of a lot more difficult, nor can you go and sell uh, pieces from that unit to the other scrapyards. You have to go either out of state or you have to go and get your proper license. So it's not the easiest thing in the world. Other than that, scrappers, we've seen a very steady scrap market. We see questions continuing to pile in, and we love giving you these answers. Let us know any ideas, questions, comments, concerns that you have with the scrap market. We'll always try to help you learn more, grow more, and give you more data for you to learn where the markets are going. This is Tom from the iScrap app. Today is Wednesday, May 23rd. Until next week, have a happy Memorial Day, and I'll scrap you later.